Welcome to the What If It's Not Depression podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Regina Stein. And today we are going to be talking about testosterone and not just testosterone in men, but testosterone in women or issues with testosterone in women. So we are going to be talking to Dr. Deb Matthew. She is a return guest from two and a half years ago, last time we we spoke and uh, had a great interview then, and you're welcome to look on the channel for her talk back in July of 2021. Um, she is the happy hormones doctor and is a best-selling author, international speaker, educator, wife, and mom of four boys. After suffering for years with fatigue and irritability due to hormone imbalances, her quest to resolve her personal health led to her change, led her to change everything about her practice in medicine. She has been featured on national podcasts, radio, and broadcast shows, including NBC, ABC, CBS, and Fox, and probably many other letters. <laughs> um, and I'm happy to have her back again to start this interview. And if you love this interview, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel to see other interviews. Welcome, Dr. Deb. Hey, it's so nice to be back and talk to you again. Yeah. Oh, it's so great. I'm so glad you made time for me again. And so I know that you have suffered many years of, of, of like, as I said, not feeling good. And so I don't really want to get into that as much because you did in the last video. And so I, I really would love to dive in right on the topic, if you don't mind, and to go from there. So so tell us why testosterone is important for women and for men, and um, and that and I know that it can be low at any age. I have had teenage male patients with very low testosterone, but we'll get into that as to why. So yeah, you know, let's just start we'll start there. Yeah. Well, testosterone, of course, is a hormone and hormones are chemical messengers. So that means they tell our body what to do. And like any hormone, if you have too much or too little, your body gets the wrong messages. And so things aren't quite right. Um, and in the case of testosterone, it can have a really big impact on your mood. We think of testosterone as the male hormone. And so we think of testosterone fueled, you know, men and, and being aggressive and competitive, but testosterone is actually really important for women too. And many women are shocked to learn that we have 10 times more testosterone than estrogen. Mm. It's just men have 10 times more testosterone than women do. But testosterone is a motivating hormone. It gives up our it gives us our, our get up and go and get things accomplished and be efficient. And it's important for our muscles and our bones to keep our, our bones and muscles strong. It's important for everything to do with sex. So interest in sex, you know, thinking mm -hmm. about it in the first place, um, the arousal, all of that. But right. because it is our motivating hormone, when testosterone levels start to go down, and we'll talk about why that may happen, but when testosterone levels start to go down, women and men for that matter, will describe themselves as often feeling flat, feeling blah, feeling unmotivated, the things that they used to really enjoy, they just don't really feel like doing. Um, so we were just talking right about the ultimate Frisbee and that's a passion of yours and you love that. So just imagine you have a hobby, you used to like love it and now you just kind of feel, eh, you just don't even feel like getting up and going and participating anymore. Right. Um, and uh, may I, if you don't mind me yeah. interrupting, so a lot of times people associate that with dope, low dopamine, as opposed to necessarily low testosterone, and it could be both, right? And, but they're also connected right. in many ways as well. So, Absolutely. yeah. And, and so what we're looking for is sort of patterns in your symptoms. But the thing is, if the problem is that testosterone is low, um, and you go into your doctor and you try to put into words how you're feeling, right? This is always a problem with mood, right? How, how do you put it into words? Mm -hmm. So if, if how you are feeling is hopeless, despairing, like if you are sobbing in the corner, you cannot function, like maybe there's something much more serious going on, but mm -hmm. if you're functioning, you're just kind of, uh, you know, just going through the motions. Like if, if, the things that must happen today, putting food on the table, like getting that report turned in at work, like you get them done, but you know, you, you, 
just barely, mm -hmm. um, it, it really could be testosterone. And when you complain to your doctor about it, we have certain tools that we are trained to use, which is usually an antidepressant. But if the problem is a low testosterone, the antidepressant is not going to fix it because it's fixing the wrong problem. Exactly. It's fixing a problem that's resulted from low testosterone downstream, perhaps. And it's only one piece of the problem rather than upstream where the, where the actual problem is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree with you. There are actually a lot of women that I have seen in my practice that have been on multiple rounds of antidepressant medications, SSRIs, SNRIs, even antipsychotic medications. When it was, you know, after doing some testing, it was a significant hormone problem. And sometimes you can actually even see that in the history. If you actually get a really, really good history with that lens, you can pick it up and it's like obvious. And yeah. so it's really important to make sure that the testing is done, but it does require really good training and, and an understanding of, of how to look for it, test for it, and then treat it. Right. Right. And that's not something that most doctors are trained to do. And in for men, they are. So it's easier for men to get the right kind of help. Um, but sometimes you have to ask for it because for men, if you have lost your motivation, if you, you know, just kind of feel like sitting on the couch in your underpants and watching golf, as opposed to getting out and playing golf, um, you know, again, when you're speaking those words to your practitioner, they're going to be thinking depression instead of thinking low testosterone, but you can ask, you can sort of say like, do you think that how I'm feeling could be from low testosterone. And most doctors now will be willing to at least measure a testosterone level. If it does come back low, um, they're usually willing to give you a testosterone prescription to see if you feel better. For women, it's a very different story. And the problem really begins because there is no FDA approved testosterone medication in the United States. Now we have testosterone available. Um, we get it from a compounding pharmacy, which is a specialized pharmacy that prepares the prescription just for you. Mm -hmm. um, but not all doctors are trained in how to prescribe those medications. Right. And so because they don't have a good tool to fix the problem, if they did find your testosterone was low, they're sort of not so comfortable or not used to measuring it for women. And then it also becomes, how do you interpret the test results? So the next thing is, will they even do the test for you? Mm -hmm. So there are lots of ways that we can measure testosterone. Um, we can measure it in a urine test. We can measure it in a saliva test. And most doctors aren't used to measuring it in either of those, but we can measure it in a blood test. And for testosterone, it's actually okay to measure it in a blood test. What we want is we want both what's called a total testosterone and free testosterone. Um, and the reason is that the total testosterone reflects how much your body is making, but the free testosterone is the, the fraction of the total testosterone that's available for your body to actually use. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of circumstances and, and um, we can maybe talk about a couple for why you might be able to make it, but not really be able to use it properly. So we need both of those tests to get the full picture. Mm -hmm. The other challenge that we have with, with measuring testosterone in women, and really this is a problem in men too, is what exactly is normal? The normal range um, is just based on all the other people that they measure, but there's no real consensus. And so there are some labs, in fact, one of the labs that we have used, there's no lower limit of normal. There's a number where if you're higher than that, it's considered abnormal. So sometimes if people have a, a very rare tumor or another problem, the testosterone level can be too high, but you can go all the way down to zero and it will never get flagged as low. And oh so God. you can have no libido, you know, you can have vaginal dryness, you can have, you know, the very unmotivated, you know, flat mood, right. not finding the joy in things, like all the things, right? Yet your doctor is looking for a lab test that's outside of the normal range and they'll just tell you that they're that you're normal. Right. So that's it's really, really important to get the actual numbers and look and really interpret it in that way. And so if you do see doctor audience, you know, and get your testosterone free and total, don't accept 
it's normal or abnormal, actually get the numbers. And, you know, I want you to speak a little bit about sex hormone binding globulin, because a lot of doctors don't also order that with the free and total testosterone. And that I think makes a very big difference in the free level, which is the active level in what's, you know, hitting receptors uh, for activation. And so sex hormone binding globulin, if that's super high, that's another way to um, increase your active hormone, so to speak, of testosterone. Am I right about that? So sex hormone binding globulin, SHBG, is a, a blood test that your doctor can order, just whether or not they're willing or understand how to interpret it in this context. But this is a protein in your bloodstream that attaches to testosterone. And when testosterone is attached to this, it's like carried around your bloodstream by this protein, it is not available. You can't use it. It becomes inactivated. Right. Whatever testosterone is left, not attached, that's what your body can use. So if you have a lot of these binding proteins in your bloodstream, it inactivates a whole bunch of your testosterone. Mm -hmm. And so you don't feel it. There can be testosterone there. So when we measure your total level, you're producing it, but you're not feeling it. And one of the really important things that causes more SHBG is birth control pills. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're swallowing estrogen, whether it's birth control pills or hormone replacement therapy, um, estrogen pills tell your liver to make more of this binding protein and that inactivates testosterone. And so testosterone levels can go down. So birth control pills, if we can jump to that for just a second, sure. have a hold effect. Birth control pills um, turn down testosterone production in the first place because how, how they act on your brain and your ovaries. Um, so they turn down testosterone production. So you have less of it. They trigger more sex hormone binding globulin. So now you inactivate more of it and now you have low testosterone. So this is one of the multiple mechanisms by which being on birth control pills can affect mood in some women can decrease libido, um, and so just something to be aware of, because if you're on birth control pills and you don't feel good, maybe an antidepressant isn't the answer. Like maybe, maybe it's not true depression. Maybe it's just a side effect of the birth control pills. Absolutely. And people have to remember that birth control pills are synthetic estrogen and progesterone at different proportions of that, depending on the birth control pill. Yeah. Right? So they're not real hormones. They are man-made drugs. They're chemicals that are never found inside a woman's body, but they are made to mimic our hormones. And they're studied based on what they do to our ovaries and ovulation and our uterus. They are not really studied for how they affect the rest of us, including our brain. Right, right. Yeah, that's a great point. So is it possible to interpret uh, indirectly the level of sex hormone binding globulin just from getting the free and total well, if you, in order to get the free testosterone, most labs did the sex hormone binding globulin on their end and they did a calculation. So, uh, and then they just show you the calculation. So, but if you didn't, if your doctor didn't order the SHBG, they don't show it on the test, but they probably did it anyway. That's how they got the number. So if your total testosterone is generous, it's, you know, normal on the high end of normal but your free testosterone is pretty low, that probably means that you have a lot of SHBG. If you, um, you know, there are other causes of SHBG, like if you are, if you have hyperthyroid, for example, if you have too much thyroid hormone, that can make it go up. So there, it's, there are a variety of things. Sometimes we don't even know why you have a lot of SHBG. Um, but another thing that I think is important to know is if your total testosterone is kind of low-ish, um, the free testosterone becomes less accurate. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, if it's going to look lower, so if your if your total testosterone is pretty low, the free testosterone doesn't matter so much anymore. There's just not enough testosterone in your system, no matter how much is inactivated. Right, right. That makes sense. Can you, what is your, um, range for free okay. and total? Okay. So really I can just tell you what I have chosen to look at um, personally. It always is based on your symptoms. So if you feel great, you have no symptoms, everything is fine, then you know more or less whatever your testosterone level is, we're not gonna worry too much about it. Every lab has a different normal range. 
Um, there is a lot of controversy over the bottom end and the top end. So there are some labs that say anything that 40 is the top end of the range. Some labs will say 70 or 80 is the top end of the range. So that's a big difference, 40 to 80. That's like double. Um, on the bottom end, though, which is really what we're concerned about today, um, there are some labs that go all the way down to zero. There are some labs that go all the way down to four. But in my experience, if a woman has symptoms and her testosterone level is below 20, um, usually she's going to feel better if we can bump the testosterone up. So and when and you mean total testosterone, total testosterone of less than 20. Okay. Um, and I believe it's nanograms per deciliter. So I, I don't know, I could be saying that wrong, but different labs use different ranges. So um, that's important to, to be aware of too. Mm -hmm. So um, to me, if somebody's testosterone, woman's testosterone is less than 20, she has symptoms. I want to do something to try to boost her testosterone levels. If she is between 20 and 30 and she has symptoms, I still, you know, would probably try to do something to help her. Generally speaking, women who have a testosterone level of 30 or above, in my opinion, um, generally feel okay. And we don't always get a, a great deal of change in how they're feeling because of testosterone. So those are just my opinions. Those aren't like, you know, researched in the medical science and totally proven. That's just what I've come to say. Now, the reason that I'm talking about total testosterone and not free testosterone is because if your total testosterone is low, if your total testosterone is eight, the free testosterone is, is not going to be accurate anymore because it's so low. So if your total testosterone is 40, but your free testosterone is 0 0.2, usually the range goes um, up to, um, it, it sort of depends what we're looking at, but, but it's down in the two to four um, kind of range. But if your free testosterone is like 0 point something, then um, that doesn't fit, right? You've got plenty of total testosterone. That's when that's when we look at the free. If your total testosterone is low, then your free testosterone is going to be low. Right, right. Yeah, that makes complete sense. Absolutely. Yeah, and I, you know, I I think it's important to also say that you this is not a silver bullet approach. You know, it's really important to first start with nutrition and lifestyle changes. So. Um, generally that goes without saying in my practice, but I think if someone's watching this video for the first time that to not assume that this is, oh, I'll get my testosterone levels and I'll fix that and everything will be great. <laughs> you know, it doesn't work that way because, you know, just for the audience to understand that if you have a lot of inflammation in your body, it's going to drive all your hormones down. And so, because that brings cortisol levels up and that inactivates a lot of your hormones uh, in so many different ways. And so it's really, really important to address inflammation, heal the gut, lifestyle changes, good sleep, good food, exercise, movement, meditation, mindset, all of that honestly needs to come first. Um, and then a lot of times the hormones actually balance quite well. And, and then it's important to do the testing to see how we can fine tune it, so to speak. Do you agree? Absolutely. And the younger you are, the more likely it is that by doing all those lifestyle things, it's going to make things better. So if you're in your twenties, if you're in your thirties, it's, it's not that not likely that your body is not able to make enough testosterone. It's that whatever's going on is either suppressing it or inactivating it. Right. And so test, um, high cortisol from stress, like you said, is a really common cause of having testosterone problems in women and in men. And right. like the same thing true for men, the younger men are, the greater the likelihood is that there's something that's suppressing testosterone. It's not that you can't make it. And right. so the more that you can do all of those lifestyle factors, the more likely it is that you are going to be able to naturally improve your testosterone levels. Right, right. And I think it's, um, especially in those younger people, it, I feel like it's dangerous to actually just put them on testosterone. It can actually make things so much worse and even lead to infertility. So people, please don't get right on testosterone, especially if you're young, you really want to figure out what the root causes are that created this. Cause it's not, it's not normal to have low testosterone in your early, you know, in your teenage and early 20 years. And so, but there are some 
um, there is something, uh, there is some research about hormone signaling and that you can take peptides to improve hormone signaling. Would you mind saying anything about that? Um, you can, I don't use a lot of peptides in my practice, so I'm probably not the expert to talk about specifically right. how to do this. Um, but there absolutely are a lot of things that we can do to help improve how the, um, hormones are working in your body. So mm -hmm. one example of this is DHEA is a precursor hormone. It comes from your adrenal glands. Right. Um, so half of testosterone comes from your ovaries and half of testosterone comes from your adrenal glands. Um, and when you have a lot of stress in your life that re your body makes cortisol, your adrenal glands are what makes cortisol. And what can end up happening over time is that DHEA production goes down and now you don't have the ingredient your body needs to make testosterone. So we can measure your DHEA level and the, the, that one can be done again in a saliva test, in a urine test, in a blood test, any of the above is fine. Um, and if your DHEA level is lower than it should be for your age, because it decreases as we age, we can sometimes, obviously we want to reduce stress and normalize cortisol, but you can actually take DHEA, which is available over the counter um, as a nutritional supplement, and that can boost your testosterone levels. It's important to say that in, in my opinion, you should have your level tested, make sure that that's even a problem for you. And don't just go off to the pharmacy and buy yourself a bottle of DHEA, because if your DHEA level is fine, giving you extra doesn't fix the problem. It can, it could cause side effects like acne and, and things like that. So um, right. it's only for people who need it. And you just, women need a much smaller dose than men. So you kind of want to be working with somebody who can help you figure out, do you need it? Um, what would your dose be? And then monitor your levels to see and watch to see, is it even helping to improve your testosterone? Is it doing what we want it to do? So that's just one example, but there are a lot of things that we can do to, um, to yeah. optimize how your hormones are working. Yeah. Uh, DHEA is part of my, my, uh, blood work panel, fun functional, uh, medicine panel. So that's a common, common thing that I test for. So yeah, uh, great. So um, you know, I'm trying to think if there's any other questions around the whole testosterone piece of it. <clears throat> I, um, I, uh, we, so we talked about testing and blood levels. Um, and I know that there's supplements besides DHEA that people can use. And I use, and I do recommend for some of my patients that are, that can boost, um, hormones. Um, and I know that there's some supplements to boost, um, testosterone as well. Um, and then there's also other treatments that really require spe very specialized training in terms of providing testosterone replacement. Do you want to say anything about any of that? Yeah. Well, maybe if we can talk about testosterone replacement, because it's very controversial mm -hmm. and it's a little bit difficult for women to find providers who can help them. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason, like, as we said earlier, is because we don't easily have an FDA approved product that we can use. Right. So first of all, that's sort of the, the end of the line, you know, like you exhaust the other things first before you get to testosterone replacement, the older you are, and I don't mean like 85, but I mean, if you're menopausal and your ovaries are no longer producing hormones, then Sometimes there's only so far that we're able to get with herbs and, you know, some of the other supplements that that could help to boost. And so at some point, testosterone replacement therapy can be incredibly helpful. And I, this is something that I do do in my practice. And I have so many women who find it transformative and how they will describe how they're feeling is that they don't like when they don't have testosterone in their system, they don't sleep as well. Um, like we said, they've lost interest in the things they used to enjoy. They just don't really feel like doing things. They feel blah, they're procrastinating. They're, you know, spinning their wheels. They want to go to the gym, but they don't really want to get there. Right. Um, when we get testosterone back into their system, now they've got that zip back in their step and they're working out and they're chopping their broccoli and cleaning out their closets. Mm -hmm. Like they just feel like themselves again. Right. And I don't want to make it sound like it's this like, happy pill or, you know, it just makes them feel normal. So it takes them from feeling not normal, just back to feeling like their normal self again. Mm -hmm. um, 
but not all doctors are willing to prescribe it. And so typically you have to find somebody who specializes in bioidentical hormones. Bioidentical means that the hormones that we're using are an exact match for what your body produces. They're not synthetic chemicals like birth control pills or the old kind of hormone replacement therapy that used to be the standard. So a bioidentical hormone practitioner will look at all of your hormones, not just your testosterone, right. because what we're really looking for is balance. So we want balance amongst all your different hormones, not just like one hormone, like the magic bullet. And if testosterone is one of the problems for you, it often starts to become a problem in women after 35 and into their 40s, which is before menopause. So after menopause, testosterone is often low, but not always. There are lots of women who are able to maintain testosterone levels even after menopause, but it starts to become more common for women in their 40s. So we try to do all the things that we can do to optimize things and get your testosterone levels naturally boosted. But at some point, if we do give testosterone, it can really make a big difference. And it impacts your career because this impacts your motivation, competitive drive, confidence, self-esteem. Um, and we know when those things go down, we're less likely to try for that promotion. Or, you know, if you're in sales, you need competitive drive, et cetera. So it really changes how women feel and um, it can be really, really helpful. It It is available um, it's available as a topical cream. It's available as um, uh, an injection. It's available as pellets that are inserted under your skin. There's lots of different ways. Um, they all have pros and cons. Some are better choices for some women than others. But at the end of the day, what, what you really need is you need to find a practitioner um, who is, is familiar and comfortable with working with testosterone replacement for women, if it gets down to that point. And then what they recommend for you, what they are most comfortable with would be the best, you right. know, choice for you. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, my experience has been with certain, some practitioners in my region is that people are in very, very high doses that are super physiological doses that are really not necessary. And it actually ends up causing lots of other problems um, you know, like elevating hemoglobin and hematocrit and, you know, blood work issues uh, on other places. Are there some other issues that you notice that are common with when you have too high of, of a dose? Too high of testosterone can cause some side effects that are nuisances as opposed to really dangerous things. Mm -hmm. So testosterone levels are too high and, and everybody's different in how they react. We're all very unique, but testosterone can cause acne it can cause oily skin and oily hair. Um, it can cause hair growing in the places that you don't want it, you know, like on your lip or on your chin. Um, right. In women who have the gene for baldness, you know, like there's male pattern baldness for men, but if women have that gene, then boosting testosterone levels high can cause some hair thinning. Um, not as bad as it does in men, but it can to some degree. So these are all nuisance things. Um, there are certain kinds of testosterone, like the injections in the pellets that do make blood levels go higher than the physiologic range, but the free testosterone generally still stays in the normal range. Mm -hmm. um, so, and we don't see the elevated hemoglobin and hematocrine, uh, hematocrit or the blood count go up the way that we do with men because the testosterone level in women, it's always going to be about one tenth of what it is in men. So it's a much bigger problem for men on testosterone replacement than women. So what I would say is, if testosterone is used prudently, that women feel tremendously better, the risks are fairly low, but it shouldn't be like a magic bullet where more is better. We're trying to make it like you're 18 again. And right. one of the things that maybe I would caution, because you know it's hard to it's hard to evaluate the practitioner to sort of know, you know, if you're picking the best one. The one thing that I might caution women about is if the only thing that they're being offered is a pellet. I, I don't mind. I mean, we do testosterone pellets in the office. I train practitioners on how to use them. But if that's the only choice that you're being offered, sometimes what's happened is that practitioner has gone to just a weekend course to learn how to insert the pellets. It's an easy procedure for them to learn how to do. But if they're not well versed in all the other things we talked about, the right. herbs, the lifestyle factors, how to evaluate all your hormones, and that's the only choice they're giving you, that's kind of a red flag for me. So I would say, um, that, sh that should just be one of many choices on the menu. 
Right. Um, and you want them to be using it prudently, not more is better. Right, right, right. And and it's very hard to change the dose if you're having a problem once the pellet is inserted. Uh, but so what we do, system. what we do is we just start off with a lowish dose to see how you respond, and then we go up from there. So pellets are actually, if the provider is well trained, pellets work really nicely. They're really easy to use. But it's the more is better philosophy that yes, if you're given a big old dose in the beginning, we can't pull it out of you if it was too much. I think the key word here is well trained. <laughs> well trained, yeah. So, and I think it is important for people to do their homework to find those well trained people. Um, so, you know, I know that there's some natural treatments to normalize testosterone. What are some things like, uh, that you would, um, recommend that if people wanted to work towards that, are there some foods that you, that increase, uh, hormone balance? Are there lifestyle changes that might normalize oh. hormones? Yeah. So the number one thing that I would say is stress management because cortisol going up can shut testosterone down. So breathing exercises, meditation, I'm sure you've talked about a lot of those things on, on other shows in your podcast. <laughs> Physical exercise is really good for hormones and specifically weight training. So, you know, pushing and pulling and, and building those strong muscles is so, so, so important for women. Um, exercise itself, right? I'm sure you talk about this all the time is a great antidepressant. Um, so resistance exercise, especially, um, and, and for men, it's a great way to boost testosterone, but in order to get the boost, it sort of needs to be when you're doing the heavier weights. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then eating a healthy diet matters a lot and hormones, all these hormones, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, cortisol, they're made out of cholesterol. Right. And so we need healthy fats in our diet. A low fat diet is not good for your hormones, but it needs to be healthy fats, avocado oil, um, extra virgin, um, organic olive oil, nuts, seeds, um, those kind of wild caught fish. Right. Um, so a healthy diet, physical activity, getting enough sleep. We produce these hormones at night when we're in a nice deep sleep. So we need you to get a good quality of sleep. So all the things that make us healthier anyway are going to be really great for optimizing hormones. Right, right. Awesome. Awesome. That's a great overview. Yeah. You know, I think we really covered the gambit. Is there anything that you think uh, we haven't talked about that you think is really important to add? Well, maybe we didn't talk a lot about men. So if I could just say, if sure. there, you know, if for a man who is feeling tired and unmotivated, what men always say, women will often say, I just don't feel like myself. Men always say, well, maybe it's just my age. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you think about who's running for president, it doesn't matter your politics, right? They're both advanced in their age and <laughs> the whole world. So if you're 40 or 50, and you just feel like sitting on the couch watching golf instead of going to play golf, that's not your age. Something's wrong and we need to check. But if you go to your doctor and you're trying to put into words how you're feeling, you often get the diagnosis of depression. Right. But if that's the case for you, ask to have your testosterone level tested. Because if the real problem is that your testosterone is low, the antidepressant's not going to fix the problem. You won't right. feel Right. And even if the, that doctor doesn't necessarily treat it, it's really good to at least know what at they least know. are. And then, then the next step would be to find somebody to treat it, but at least know if that's a factor. And, you know, it's, so we know that for certain antidepressant medications, low libido is a side effect for certain medications, gaining weight can be a side effect. And testosterone also affects both of those things. So if you go in at the starting point with low testosterone, and then we put a medication on top of it, it just makes it more likely that you're going to have those side effects. So, um, which is just more depressing, right? right. So that's why knowing can be an important part of finding the right solution. Right, right. And if your doctor doesn't want to order them, then it's really just important to find another doctor who will, you know, support you in, in finding these answers and solutions. So I know that you have an ebook called This Is Not Normal, A Busy Woman's Guide to Symptoms of Hormone Imbalance. Um, that you're going to share with my audience. And that will be in the show notes, everybody. Um, and that your website is signaturewellness.org. You're located in South Carolina? 
Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, North Carolina. Sorry. <laughs> Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, you're on Facebook and Instagram. So those links will be in the show notes. Um, and uh, you are accepting new patients, right? They would have to fly out to see you. Yeah. Um, and um, even though you are uh, have a license in North Carolina, you can see them once a year um, and uh, have visits in between uh, via telehealth. So um, I think uh, that's an excellent option. If you, if so, if people, if you strike out finding somebody, look to contacting Dr. Deb Matthew and um, she'll take care of you. Thanks. So thank you so much, Dr. Deb, for joining me today. That was a, a ton of information. I'm sure everyone's going to love this episode. And again, if you love this episode, please click the like button and subscribe. And um, also look out for information about my boot camp. What if it's not depression boot camp? And there's a new offering that's coming uh, probably in September out in Austin, Texas called the Healing Depression Project. So uh, keep your eyes and ears open for that information as well. Thank you so much. Thank you.